In its most basic definition, the word photography, derived from the Greek language, means drawing with light. In contemporary times, the term has largely become synonymous with camera or lens-based imagery. While less used, photographic artists still have several means to explore the medium's most basic properties with or without the aid of a camera. With lenses used to focus light, the sharply defined representation of objects is the milieu of cameras, but in its elemental form, photography need not a camera at all. Photograms, cliché verre, and even the digital scanner are three ways to produce light-sensitive imagery without lens-based devices. In this assignment, I'm asking you to make photographs without the aid of a camera. Photograms are created by simply placing objects onto a sensitized piece of film or photo paper and exposing it to light. Where the objects block the light from the light sensitized material below, it does not react. Where there is no object to prevent the light from striking the sensitized material, it reacts as it would normally upon development. I'm going to show you a few historic examples including this photogram by Laszlo Moholy-Naj, who was a teacher at the Bauhaus and later the Institute of Design in Chicago. He made this in the darkroom. He would have put his light-sensitive material down, looks like maybe a spatula, his hand, some other items. The hand he likely, during the exposure, moved, so he probably put the hand there, started the exposure, and then pulled his hand away sometime during the several seconds of that exposure, hence to create the gray shape. Or one of his contemporaries in Europe, Man Ray, an American photographer who lived and worked in Paris. Man Ray was a surrealist, and you see that in some of his photograms as well, which he called rayographs, another one of his images. A little less abstract, per se, than moholy -Nage. This pair of pieces by Frederick Sommer, he took cellophane, wadded it up, applied paint to the surface of it, let it dry, and then put that on top of a light sensitized piece of paper and exposed it to light. Contemporary British photographer Adam Foose has made photograms utilizing several different subjects. He did this series of exposures using color photographic paper on the bottom of a shallow tray with an inch or two of water on top. He then placed a baby in that bath water and fired off his electronic flash to create the exposure. So in these, not only do you see a silhouette of the baby, but you also see the ripples of the water as they react to the movement of the child. He's done a similar series, but instead of using babies, use snakes swimming across the water. This next one is a little less cheery, even if the title is Love, what you're seeing a pair of rabbits and their entrails. Abelardo Morel is a Boston-based photographer. If the name sounds familiar, you might be familiar with his photographs made inside camera obscuras. Well, he's also been doing these very beautiful cliché verre photographs. I pulled this from his website where you can see a brief definition of the cliché verre, but the traditional cliché verre, an artist would take a pane of glass, light a candle, and hold the glass very close to the candle, and as the candle burns, it would actually deposit its soot on the glass, and as long as you keep it moving and close, you can build up this dark, sooty texture on a sheet of glass. 
once you have that glass coated, you can then go in with etching tools or even your fingers and make a drawing, or you can press something against that and lift off part of the smoke and use the remaining part as your negative. So the traditional cliche there, you smoke on glass, but what you'll see in reading this is that he uses ink instead. But let me show you some examples. So again, he's taking ink and spreading it across a sheet of glass. And usually he's taking several layers of ink. And my guess is some of them are more densely layered than others. And then when they're drying and they're sticky, he'll actually press a plant into that and then lift it off and allow it to dry and use that as his printing plate. They're both abstract and defined at the same time. And that's one of the interesting things about these processes is you can use them to make abstracted photographs or you can use them to make photographs that are highly representational. That's one of your creative choices as an artist. I have just a couple images here. Frederick Marsh, cliche vers. Marsh, and don't quote me on this, I think teaches at Ohio State. I believe he lives in Columbus, Ohio, but he's born and trained in Germany. What he's done here is taken charcoal, salt, and water and mixed them up, and I'm guessing kind of splattered them down onto a piece of glass and then used that as his negative. Very abstract, but when you see the prints, they look very detailed. Well, scanographs. There aren't a ton of great examples out there. There are some. I include my own work in this and something I don't often do in my classes. But I've started doing scanographs in the early 1990s when even Photoshop was in its infancy. So quite frankly, while I used to not show these works, people kept telling me, well, you should, you should. Uh, and indeed, as I think about it, I'm probably one of the first artists to actually use this digital process where I'm using the scanner to create highly resolved, very detailed photographs. Don't take too much meaning out of the cross form. I use the cruciform here really as a suggestion of awe and reverence, not necessarily for its religious implications, although I'm aware of those implications. What I did in making these photographs, these were four by five inch boxes of glass plate negatives that were given to me. They were made by a photographer, I'm guessing about 1910. They were for all over the country, but mostly of Yosemite and some other national parks. Since I was interested in the boxes and in scanning them, it sort of occurred to me that I was as interested in the backside as I was the front. So I started scanning all sides of the boxes and then essentially used Photoshop as a collaging tool to reassemble the box. And I could have taken the shape of a L or a T or frankly many other shapes, but this is one of the shapes that certainly provided a powerful sense of reverence to these past artists. In addition to that, I did a series of scanned photographs where I scanned tools. These were influenced by Walker Evans' photographs that he did for Fortune magazine in, the, I think, the 1940s, might have been the late 30s, uh, that he made of tools. His tools were tools that workers used to build things. It was essentially a commentary on the work ethic of America. Conversely, the tools I photograph are generally tools of destruction. This is a frog gig. And my guess is how this is used is that you point this so the blades here punch into a frog. And when you do this, this is spring fed, basically. It's tension. So when this gets pushed back, these things collapse. Frankly, I like the fact that it was both beautiful 
and kind of appalling at the same time. This is a scanograph of a collapsible hatchet. Why you would need the hatchet to collapse, I'm not so sure. Maybe to fit in a backpack. Maybe this was a gadget they sold to Boy Scouts or something like that. I tried it. It's got a wing nut on the other side. And as soon as you hit something with it once, it loosens the wing nut. And so every time you strike this, you would have to tighten it over and over and over again. Not very successful as a tool, but beautiful as an object. I also did a series scanning my mail. This was, in a way, an idea about self-portraiture. When I got this, I was department chair at Chico State. So whoever sent me this didn't know who I was, but knew I was supposed to get it. Or sometimes the envelopes that I scanned were just intrinsically beautiful. So in this assignment, I'm wanting you to create works using either the photogram, the cliché vert, or if you have access to a scanner, the scanograph process. You should decide whether you want to use these processes to create abstract or defined or representational photographed.